All right, thank you very much. It's great to be here, guys. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. So, um, my name is Yuan I'm from HyperLab, a emerging technology company uh, that focuses on the areas of emerging technology, 5G, uh, data analytics, system integration, cloud computing, etc. Our headquarter is in Singapore, and we have uh, branches, offices in different countries, including Vietnam. So today I'm going to talk about immersive technology and our digital twin future. You might have heard about terms such as AR, VR, MR before, but really what are they, right? Well, it turns out that immersive technology or extended reality, short form XR, are actually the umbrella terms for a spectrum of digital realities that we know. So on one hand of the spectrum, you have virtual reality that allows users to teleport themselves to a different environment. And on the other side of the spectrum, you have augmented reality that allows layman to see additional information on top of your physical reality. And right now, we also have mixed reality that is typically based on this kind of mixed reality devices. So once the users perform these kind of devices, they are able to attract uh, practice some of those like hands-free mixed reality experiences, large-scale augmented reality experiences that is mapped according to your physical environment. So I hope that gives everybody a uh, very quick understanding of uh, immersive technology. If you're not familiar with technolo these technologies, you might think that they are actually a very new technologies. Well, but actually they're not. Back in the 1950s, the US Army has already been using VR for military training. And in 2014, Facebook acquired this VR hardware company called Oculus. So that actually marks the beginning, the start of the current wave of XR adoption. And today, you have big guys such as Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Apple, just to name a few of them. They are investing heavily to develop mixed reality devices, hoping to create the next generation of computing devices, which will replace our tablets and smartphones for laptops in the future. So we are here, uh, our company was founded in 2014 and we are one of the earliest players uh, during this trend of XR adoption as well. And according to Statistica, the global market size for immersive technology this year is uh, 8.8 billion US dollars. The growth in the market is real. Um, based on our experiences in the past seven years, uh, we have it's very heartening to see that a lot of people are thinking of ways to adopt to immersive technology and think of ways to use this for different type, different aspects of their business operations. So this is just a, a tip of the iceberg of the people that we have worked with. And a lot of those use cases are really innovative um, and a lot of times the ideas actually comes from the users themselves. So I think it's a very uh, encouraging kind of trend we're seeing in the market right now. No, but for some people, they might be thinking that um, XR is something like something that is good to have. Does it really solve some kind of like pain, pain points that people face nowadays? Well, I will share with you uh, two trends, two premises uh, that we are talking about right now to highlight to you that immersive technologies are actually beyond uh, just something that is good to have, right? So the first trigger, that is the uh, Industry 4.0. The world is going digital. We have IoT that is able to generate big data. 5G is coming up in a lot of countries, so data can be transmitted at high speed and low latency. We have cloud computing that is able to handle and process a huge amount of data. AI and machine learning can help generate patterns and insights based on the big data. And APIs and open standards allow us to do system integration, and eventually we can do collecting intelligence from them. So as all of those fancy things are happening at the back end, how do we make sure that human beings are still relevant in this whole infrastructure? Right? We need to find a way that allows human beings to be able to interact with the information, interact with the data, interact with the insights, and collaborate with each other with all of those technological effects. So to us, immersive technology is actually the answer. It is going to be a bridge between human, the users, to the back end structure that we are all going to have. And the second trend 
is COVID. Well, this is something that we are all very familiar with. COVID has hit the world really badly. Um, until today, we are not able to travel. And I really have no idea what's the next time I'll be able to visit Vietnam. This year in May, WHO actually also announced that the thing COVID might not go away. And recently I read a report from Harvard University, a study which they have done. They run a simulation and you arrive at a pretty much similar conclusion that in the next a couple of years, we may still be facing COVID. So now a lot of organizations then have this burning issue. How to enable efficient remote collaborations? How to run uh, engaging online sessions, events? So there's a lot of issues. Uh, has pushed immersive technology adoption to the front end, to the front line that everybody now needs to pay attention to. Now with these two premises that I've mentioned just now, what trends then are we observing? I'll be sharing with you three trends, three trends that we have uh, uh, been discussing internally within the team, uh, based on our seven years of uh, sweat and heart and uh, sweat and blood and, uh, and, uh, and tears. So uh, hopefully some of those uh, ideas will be able to spark more conversation among everyone here. Trend number one is that we're seeing XR becoming increasingly affordable and accessible. Companies like ourselves are able to provide tools that allow laymen to create their own interactive AR and VR experiences without having to know any coding language. And also hardware advancement is being pushed by some of those uh, big uh, electronic, consumer electronic companies. So all of the hardware we have nowadays are able to support high-end AR and VR experiences. So here are just a sneak peek of uh, some of those tools we have on our central platform. Right, so right now, all the layman have the tools. We're all at the frontier of shaping the future with media technology. What legacy do we choose to leave with our future generations? What can we do? What, what do we choose to do right now? Right? And here are some answers from our communities. Corporates start to create virtual tools to engage their consumers, the customers remotely. So right now, even if they are separated by COVID, in different countries, they are able to visit virtually some of those offices and facilities. Schools around the world are adopting virtual reality. They used to run learning journeys to bring students overseas to study overseas culture. But nowadays, they are able to bring the world to the classroom for the students to learn their global perspectives. Enterprises organizations start to pick up remote MR collaboration tools to enhance their communication collaboration experiences to improve efficiency. And some companies even adopt AR 3D experiences to do product launch. So I have a drone over here. Some of them use AR to conduct training experiences or VR to use these kind of 3D technical drawings to conduct training experiences. Or some, some event organizers are even thinking of using digital human in their events like this. So this is the founder of Agolab. Um, he's not physically here, but I'm able to bring him over. Right. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to take the first step nowadays and create your own AR and VR experiences. And actually right now, I am using Reticast to do an augmented reality broadcasting using just a smartphone that's currently posted on my table. But I would like to ask ourselves to stretch our mind a little bit further to think about the conception that the concept that immersive technology is actually not just about AR, VR, and MR. We need to look at it at a much bigger picture. Over here I have a, uh, the report from Gartner. So this is called the hype cycle for emerging technologies. Gartner actually uh, uh, provides a report on an annual basis. This is the report from 2019, right? So just to give everyone a little bit of background of uh, the hype cycle for emerging technologies. As you can see, there's this curve over here. So what uh, this chart says is that for every single new technology, you will go through this particular path. When it first comes out, everybody's going to be super excited about it. 
So that's the moment where technology will go up the slope. And we're going to talk about it, try to use it. But at one point of time, it's going to hit the pit. That is the moment where people will realize, hey, this technology isn't that mature yet. Some of those concepts we have in mind, well, we probably need to wait for another uh, couple of years for it to become mature. So normally there's going to be this dump slope that uh, is where the disillusionment happens. But if a piece of technology is able to, but if a piece of technology is able to survive the, this particular path, then it is going to reach the end of the slope where that is where the mass adoption comes into play. So both VR and MR have actually both survived this particular path already. VR disappeared from this path in 2017, and AR disappeared from this path in 2018. In 2019, uh, we saw this particular technology at the bottom of the curve that is called an immersive workspace. Right? And this year, actually, we talked together. Um, it seems that there is a general consensus um, that the whole technology, we are looking at the combination of different kinds of technologies and looking to providing AR, VR, and MR with other technologies to create a holistic value for our users. So this is the chart in 2020. When we are looking to, um, if you can see, there's this technology at the tip, which is called social distancing technology. It's some kind of hype that's generated within uh, the COVID social distancing period of time. And this is the moment where we're going to continuously explore how to better combine different technologies and create holistic value for our end users. So this then brings me to the second trend I'd like to introduce to everyone. That is, immersive technology is now being integrated into the bigger IT infrastructure and ecosystem. There is a list of emerging technologies that um, is widely acknowledged in the world. If you think about combining them all together, there are actually a lot of things we can do. And digital twin is one of them. Imagine you have a 3D model of your uh, facility. For example, I have a ship over here. You can actually pull in data whether it's real-time data or historical data. If you have real-time data, we can actually enable multiple users to look at these additional things together from different places, and you can make decisions together based on real-time status. You can do real-time inspections of your facilities as well, regardless of where you are. And if you have historical data, we can even use that to run simulations and do proper resources planning based on the insights that is able to generate based on data and patterns. So over here, some of those uh, uh, examples are actually uh, from our collaborations with uh, governments around the world to create uh, smart city digital twin experiences. And we can even look at something that is at a bigger scale. Imagine we're not just looking at a small 3D model. We're now looking at something that is based uh, in your physical environment. Let's say you have a factory, you have a building, you can look into having this kind of spatial computing where you have immersive experiences all around you in the physical space. And this is actually a very interesting idea to think about because in the past we are all like 3D creatures, but with this we are able to create the fourth dimension of experiences that enhances people's visiting experiences to different places or the on site uh, working experiences at different kind of facilities such as warehouses or factories. So it is really a time where we can reshape human interactions and redefine space and time. It's a very exciting option, right? And that then brings us to the third trend which we like to mention the other one. With every single technological shift, there is not only a mindset shift as well. In the past, um, system integration and the smart work seems to be a zero sum game thing. If a system integrator gets a job, that means someone else has to lose the particular project. But things have changed. We have heard a lot of things from, from our SM partners that nowadays we are no longer just looking at competition. Actually, we need to shift our mindset from competition. To collaborate, if we are able to connect with our systems and encourage us together, we are able to generate more insights and provide more value for our end users. COVID is a good example where 
government agencies try to link up the systems together to track the state of uh, movement um, and try to ensure that if anyone is identified, we have to be, we can, as soon as possible, identify those people who are affected. Right? So it's a time we're looking to more of the collaborations. It's not about what the team uh, can do, what a company can do. We're moving into a future where we're looking to what our ecosystem can do, what kind of ecosystem we have within uh, our team and within and beyond our team as well. So with that, then we can look into a connected future where we have connected things, connected systems, connected intelligence, and eventually we have a connected world. But if there's just one key takeaway uh, we're going to have from this sharing session, I want us to forget about everything that we have mentioned earlier. Forget about the two premises, forget about the three trends we're talking about, but just remember one thing. Technology will always evolve. Whatever we have talked about today, it may become obsolete very quickly in the next couple of months or years down the road. But we can't always be the one to chase the changes, to follow the changes. Our ability is to be able to adapt to changes and think innovatively and critically about anything, technology, its social impact, political, economic impact, will eventually be our guiding light. And that kind of mindset is the one that is the anchor um, which will help us to sustain in the long run. And I'd like to end today's sharing session with uh, uh, a picture. So this is a picture of my mom she took in her uh, 20s, a elegant young lady standing in front of a very nice scenery. And over here, we have another picture. Okay, you're not able to see it right now, but we have another picture of me using an Instagram filter. And if you think about Instagram filters we have nowadays, uh, we are pretty much all uh, very funny with all those emojis and stuff coming out from our mouth and have things covering our faces. But eventually, if you think about it, 20 years, 30 years down the road, everybody's grandparents is going to look that way, right? So let's just stay open-minded, stay adventurous, and stay collaborative, and we are able to embrace the future together. So we have our representative today at Boost 33, Cindy over here. If you'd like to talk to her uh, about some of those uh, collaboration opportunities, please feel free to go ahead. And we look forward to connecting with everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your sharing.